Hello, our dear viewers. Welcome to today's episode of Afia Health and Lifestyle Interview Series. It is good to see you once again. And yes, today we'll also be treating a topic, uh, one of the topics in our um, liver series. And, and of course, the expert we'll be bringing to this show is Dr. Awa Alao. Uh, Dr. Awa Alao has been talking to us over the last, um, over about four episodes already. This is the fourth one. And everything has been about the liver. The liver is very unique and there are so many diseases attached to it and we've been treating um, them one by one. So today we are talking about alcohol liver diseases. I know this one is going to resonate a lot with a lot of people because um, alcohol is pretty much common and we're going to be talking about the dangers of um, excessive alcohol to the liver. Of course, uh, moderate uh, alcohol is very important if you want to live your healthy life. But I'll leave all of that to the experts. And for those of us that are just joining us for the first time, welcome to our Fair Health and Lifestyle interview series. And if you have not met Dr. Awala before uh, on our show, here's a very good opportunity to meet her. Dr. Awa Alao is a dual trained gastroenterologist and a pathologist. She specialized in clinical and RNA based translational research focused on viral hepatitis, liver fibrosis, and cancer. She is a fierce advocate for research and improvement of liver disease globally, particularly in Africa. She is currently an assistant professor at the UND where she teaches second and third year medical students. She is the director of hepatology and outpatient gastroenterology at Outro Health. Her goal is to help patients understand their disease body so they can make better decisions about their health. In her free time, she likes to hike, read about African history and does not miss a beat with the African music genre. Hello, our dear viewers. Welcome to today's episode of Afia Health and Lifestyle Interview Series. It is good to see you once again. And yes, today we'll also be treating a topic, uh, one of the topics in our um, liver series. And, and of course, the expert we'll be bringing to this show is Dr. Awa Alao. Uh, Dr. Awa Alao has been talking to us over the last, um, over about four episodes already. This is the fourth one. And everything has been about the liver. The liver is very unique and there are so many diseases attached to it and we've been treating um, them one by one. So today we are talking about alcohol liver diseases. I know this one is going to resonate a lot with a lot of people because um, alcohol is pretty much common and we're going to be talking about the dangers of um, excessive alcohol to the liver. Of course, uh, moderate um, alcohol is very important if you want to live your healthy life. But I'll leave all of that to the experts. And for those of us that are just joining us for the first time, welcome to our Fair Health and Lifestyle interview series. And if you have not met Dr. Awa Alao before uh, on our show, here's a very good opportunity to meet her. Thank you very much for joining us, Dr. Awa Alao. Uh, welcome to Afia Health and lifestyle interview series once again uh this is the fourth interview you are having with us and we are really happy we are really happy to to have you on the show um if you don't mind saying hi to our dear viewers hi good morning <clears throat> uh, excuse me good afternoon dear viewers uh, my name is dr Alao. i am very happy to be here and thank you for having me All right, thank you very much for joining us. Um, of course, uh, we are known for not wasting time and going straight into the interview. Alcoholic liver diseases. In general, what are we talking about here? Yeah, so alcohol-related liver disease is caused by excessive consumption of alcohol. It is a very common but preventable disease. And um, we can talk about some statistics that are very important. Women are more likely to suffer liver damage from alcohol than men. And um, men are more likely to develop alcohol liver disease than women because men consume more alcohol. However, women are more susceptible to the alcohol toxicity uh, to the liver. 
and they have twice uh, the relative risk of alcoholic liver disease and cirrhosis compared to men. And that has more to do with the enzymes that the liver has to break down um, alcohol in terms of the amount that men have compared to women. And then ethnicity matters as well in genetics. Those are important factors when it comes to uh, when it's related to alcoholic liver disease. Uh, cirrhosis, mortality is higher in men of Hispanic, uh, Native American, Native Alaskan, and uh, uh, origin compared to white populations when it comes to alcohol liver disease. And in general, the risk of liver disease increases with the quantity and duration of alcohol intake. Wow. Thank you. Um... One thing I can say for certain is we don't even need to discuss the cause because we already know from the name of the disease it is from alcohol. So uh, what I want us to actually talk about this time around is the symptoms, um, things we need to do when we are faced with this, um, with this kind of diseases. And of course, the prevention will be reduction in a, of the intake of alcohol. So how do you know somebody has alcohol liver disease? So I think it's important before we get to that is to know how much is too much, how much alcohol can cause liver disease. Then we'll talk about the symptoms okay. if that's okay with you. So a standard drink equal to about 14 grams, which is six ounces of pure alcohol. So generally, uh, this amount of pure alcohol is found in 12 ounces of beer. So your regular bottle of beer has about 5% alcohol intake. So that's 14 grams. And that is the same equivalent as drinking eight ounces of malt liquor, which has 7% alcohol uh, content. Then uh, five ounces of wine. So a glass of wine uh, has the same alcohol content, about, but um, about 14 grams. And also 1.5 ounces of a shot of a 80 proof alcohol, like whiskey, vodka. So I'm telling you that one beer, one bottle of beer is the same as drinking one uh, eight ounce malt liquor or a glass of wine or a shot of vodka. All have the same alcohol quantity, but you could see that the more proof of alcohol you have, meaning the uh, percentage of alcohol content, the smaller the amount you need to cause problems. Yeah. So, and then the other question people may want to know is, well, is beer or wine safer to drink than liquor like vodka? No, the difference is not in what type of alcohol you drink, it's the quantity. So like I said, one 12 ounce, one bottle is the same amount as five ounce glass of wine or a shot of liquor. So it's the amount that is consumed that affects a person the most, not the type of alcohol that you drink. And so what do would you consider, what people would wanna know is what do you consider moderate drinking? So adults of legal drinking age can choose not to drink or to drink mod in moderation by limiting the intake to two drinks or less a day for men and one drink or less a day for women. Again, the difference between men and women is more genetic. It's not because we don't want women to drink more, nothing of that sort. It's just that the way that our body metabolizes alcohol is different between men and women. So drinking less is better for health than drinking more. And then uh, I guess the other question that would be important is, what is excessive alcohol use? There are different ways that you can look at that. So excessive alcohol uses, is, is, it includes binge drinking, so when you go to a club or a party and you drink excessively for just that one day or heavy drinking, which is someone who drinks a lot, but continually for a long time and uh, any alcohol used by people under the age of 21 uh, and any alcohol used by um, pregnant women. Those are what we consider excessive drinking. So binge drinking by um, definition is a pattern of alcohol consumption that brings the blood alcohol level to the uh, limit of 0.8%. So that's the 0.08%. Uh, that's the limit that, you know, do, uh, the police, at least in the United States, police will check and stop you uh, um, on, um, from driving and causes driving while drunk issues. So this pattern of drink, drinking usually corresponds to five or more drinks at a single occasion. We'll give you that for men or four or more drinks on a single occasion for women. 
So generally within two hours, that's what we consider binge drinking, meaning short period of time and you consumed large amounts of alcohol. For men, mm -hmm. heavy drinking is typically when you consume 15 drinks or more per week. So you see the difference between them is the time. So binge drinking is short period of time and large, fairly uh, large amounts of drinking, but heavy drinking is even larger amounts of drinking, 15 per week though. So for women, heavy drinking is typically when you have eight or more drinks per week. And so then you want to consider, well, all this drinking, what types of liver disease can you actually get? Sure, alcohol can cause liver problems, but the most common thing that happens with alcoholic liver disease is fatty liver, meaning your liver gets fatty. Fat is built up of, in, in the liver cells and it leads to enlargement of the liver. So you'll see people walking around with big bellies. Uh, it is the most common cause of um, uh, common alcohol induced liver problem. And it occurs after um, alcohol ingestion and is generally reversible without with abstinence. So if you stop drinking, your liver will reverse that. It's not believed to predispose a patient to any chronic form of liver disease. So if it's just the fatty liver that you have, if you stop drinking or you drink in mod moderation, you can, you, you, you can still maintain that and your liver doesn't go any further in terms of damage. But, and fatty liver is a universal finding in anyone that drinks heavily and up to about 40% of people who drink moderately. And, and, and they, they, you get to see fatty changes in their liver if an ultrasound is done. So the second type of liver uh, disease damage is alcoholic hepatitis. That is where the danger starts to come. It's an acute inflammation in the liver. The, there is death of liver cells, often followed by permanent scarring in the liver. It's an acute form of alcoholic-induced liver injury that occurs with the consumption of large quantity of alcohol. We, uh, over a, long, uh, a prolonged period of time. So you're heavy drinkers. Alcoholic hepatitis can range from severity to ver from you not feeling anything or having any symptoms um, to having liver failure and death. So that is a very, very serious one. And then the last stage, which we've talked about before is cirrhosis. So there is alcohol cirrhosis. And this is destruction of the normal liver tissue. Uh, it leaves scar tissue in place of working liver tissue. So if you consume more than 80 grams of alcohol per day, this is associated with increased severity of your alcohol hepatitis, but not in overall uh, prevalence. There is a, a dose-dependent relation between the alcohol intake and incidence of alcohol cirrhosis, meaning the more you drink, the worse and the more uh, you are at risk for alcohol cirrhosis. Uh -huh. Um, so daily intake of more than 60 grams in men and 20 grams in women significantly increases your risk of cirrhosis. So daily, in addition, daily drinking compared to binge drinking appears to be more harmful. So in terms of cirrhosis, but binge drinking certainly can also lead to the hepatitis that I described before. So now I'm going to move on to what you talked about. What are the signs and symptoms? What do we look for? Symptoms. So <clears throat> fatty liver, like I talked about, the belly getting bigger. Uh, this often causes no symptoms to uh, people at all. Uh, it's just build up fat in the liver cells. What they can, uh, um, the things that they can get is uh, maybe uh, pain on the right side of the belly as the liver gets bigger. Uh, tiredness and weakness. Um, weight loss is another one where the belly be becomes big, but you're losing muscle and you're still losing weight. Um, alcoholic hepatitis, what you get is pain over the liver. There's significant pain with this one. Uh, fever, weakness, nausea, vomiting, um, appetite loss. There's yellowing of the skin and eyes, which is what we call jaundice. Um, so alcoholic cirrhosis is all the symptoms I just mentioned, plus more. They uh, become malnourished. There's bleeding in the intestine that can happen. Fluid in the belly, which we call ascites. Um, Portal hypertension, which is just increased resistance to blood flow uh, through the liver. There's confusion. They can get liver cancer, kidney failure, and ultimately death if the, a new liver is not um, given to the patient. 
So those are the things that can happen with alcohol. It's a very, very serious problem that is very preventable. Wow. All this uh, because of excessive uh, intake of alcohol. Um, looking at all of this, uh, it is very, very preventable, like, you, like you've rightly said. So uh, what we need to do now is to uh, ensure that people know this and that uh, they can... Um, they can begin to reduce the uh, amount of alcohol they take. So um, what advice do you have for our viewers? So the first thing uh, to do is, well, let's talk about how we can diagnose it. Blood tests, we can check your liver function test again, which is extremely important. And also blood alcohol level can be checked. And you being honest with your doctor, because if you don't mention that you're um, taking alcohol, or that, or you don't think that your alcohol consumption is 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 um, a problem, then your doctor wouldn't know that this is part of something that they need to ask you. So it's very important to be very honest with your doctor so that they can do the best for you. So blood tests, sometimes liver biopsy, an ultrasound again is extremely important. It will show the big liver and uh, how fatty it is, and if there's cirrhosis, it can help with that as well. A CAT scan if we need to. But honestly, like we talked, uh, I think the more important thing is let's talk about prevention and screening. Many patients do not openly disclose an accurate history of alcohol use. And that is one of the major problems because they don't think that it's a problem. In addition, there is no physical examination finding or lab abnormality that is specific for alcohol liver disease. So all patients should therefore be screened for alcohol abuse or dependency. And what, what do I mean by that? So abuse is defined as harmful use of alcohol with the development of negative health or social consequences, meaning that you are, you, the intake of alcohol has made it uh, a negative impact in your life that you cannot live a normal function in life. And dependency is, is defined by physical tolerance and symptoms of withdrawal. And those are symptoms that we can discuss in a minute. So there are certain questions that your doctors can ask you. They're called cage questionnaires that can help understand if you are someone that um, has an alcohol abuse or dependency. I wanna talk about those questionnaires because it's important because these are questions that you can ask yourself or friends to try to understand if they have a problem with alcohol. So these questions are referred to, referred to as uh, cage questions and it's asking um, patients do you feel like you need to cut down on drinking? Do you get annoyed at others when they are concerned about your drinking? Um, do you feel guilty about drinking, um, uh, using alcohol as an eye opener in the morning? Meaning, do you have to drink early in the morning uh, to be able to function? Those are questions that you wanna ask. They're called the cage questions. So C, cutting down alcohol. A, you're annoyed at others asking you and concerned about your drinking. Um, G, the guilt, feeling guilty about uh, drinking. And then again, E, the eye opener, meaning you're drinking in the morning. Um, those are the uh, major questions that you can ask to try to see if someone is actually very sensitive. So about if you get more than two positive answers, the sensitivity is about 71%. And it's very specific too. It's about 95% for alcohol dependency. Um, so that is uh, a way that you can try to figure out if someone has a problem with alcohol. So like you said, in terms of prevention, the most important prevention is abstinence. So abstinence is the most important therapeutic intervention for people with, uh, liver uh, with this disease. In the early stages, liver disease may be um, reversed. So if the person stops drinking, we can stop um, alcohol liver disease from um, progressing. And I think um, in summary, what we need to know is that alcoholic liver disease is a common but preventable disease. Um, it is caused by heavy use of alcohol. The liver breaks down alcohol. So if you drink more than it can process, you become seriously damaged. The effects of alcohol on the liver depends on how much and how long you're drinking, you've been drinking for. The most important part of treatment is to completely drink alcohol. 
once you've been diagnosed with a liver problem due to alcohol. Sometimes diet changes can be advised as well. So the liver is often able to repair itself, uh, some of the damage caused by alcohol, so you can live a normal life. In some cases, you may need liver transplant, and that's when you have liver cirrhosis. But you, can, you must complete a rehab program and go through alcohol detox before that is even an option. So those are the summary, the key summary, key things that people need to understand with alcoholic liver disease. Thank you very much, Dr. Walao, for joining us once again on Afia Health and Lifestyle Interview Series. We really, really want to appreciate your uh, you taking time out of your busy schedule to share one or two um, with us here. Thank you very much. And we look forward to having you here some other time. Thank you, and thank you for having me. Have That's a nice day. You too. Bye. So, our dear viewers, um, just like you've heard uh, Dr. Awala say, you have to um, reduce uh, the intake of alcohol because there's so much damage it can do um, to your liver. And the liver is a very, very important organ in the body. It will try to regenerate, to try to solve this problem. When it becomes excessive, um, it is detrimental to your health. And just like we say here, the goal is to live a healthier life. Thank you for joining us on this episode. Um, we look forward to your comments. Uh, in the comment section, uh, we're going to have um, Dr. Alao's um, social media handles so that you can send in any question of your choice and she would look for, she would definitely answer them. Thank you for joining us on Afia and Lifestyle Interview Series this episode and we look forward to seeing you next. <music>